Hi guys, welcome to this next video on chapter one of engineering mechanics. So we're going to go through chapter 1.4 now, the exponential form and prefixes. Okay, so if you recall, we're using this uh, textbook by Hibbler, Mechanics for Engineer Statics, and we're going to briefly discuss section 1.4. Okay. So, maybe the best thing for us to do is just to have a look at this. The important things for us to get here, guys, are what is a prefix? So, essentially, we need to look at exponential form and prefixes. Okay? So, please just study this table. And please uh, distinguish between what is exponential form and what is a prefix. If something looks like this, 10 to the 9, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 3, for example, that is what we call the exponential form. And what you also notice is that using in the, uh, the SI units, um, the international system of units, what we focus on here are, t are powers of three, if you, can, if you can see that there. So this is then the exponential form, and then this is the prefix. Don't get them confused because um, in a minute I will discuss how they differ quite greatly and, uh, in their application. Okay. So please study this, please take note of this, this is very important. The next thing that I would like to discuss is, which is very important, is this section here, rules for use, okay? Please have a look at this very thoroughly, please study this very thoroughly. The one that I want to focus on, you can go through all of them, but the, the one that I feel is very, very, very important is this second one here which says the exponential power of, on a unit having a prefix refers to both the unit and its prefix. Okay, I'm going to read that again. The exponential power, for example, in here we have a 2, it could be a 3 or whatever, on a unit having a prefix refers to both the unit and its prefix. Okay, so if we look over here, we see a micronewton. You got that? Micronewton squared. That squared refers to both the micro and the newton. So if we further break it up, we see that micronewton is multiplied by itself there. Micronewton squared. All right, sorry. Okay, so. What we need to see here, and I'll, I'll write some examples now so it'll make it a bit clearer. The square over there refers to both a micro and a newton. Okay? And here's another example, millimeter squared. The square refers to both the prefix, milli, and to meter. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples now. I'll, we can even consider that example again. So if we say micro newton squared. What this means is we are saying 10, if we look at it in exponential form, we say 10 to the minus 6 Newton squared. Okay? Please see that. So when we actually do the calculation and we, and we see uh, what the result is in exponential form, we are going to say 10 to the minus 6 times 2, which is 10 to the minus 12 Newton. Okay, so micronewton squared is 10 to the minus 12 newton. The other example was millimeter squared. This is the same as 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Okay, which gives us 10 to the minus 6 meters squared square. Oh, by the way, I forgot to put the square over here. Square goes on the Newton. So, let's come back here now. So, and then this equals this equals 10 to the minus 6. Right? So, that's basically what I want to show you there, is that millimeters squared gives us 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. Okay? Now, let's, uh, let's look at an example. Example... 1.2 in your textbook. This is it here. 
example 1.2, we can look at that part A. Part A. Let's go through this step by step. We have uh, 50 millinewton multiplied by 6 giganewton. All right. So, what is the first thing we do? We take the these the, the values here, 50 times 6, and we obtain 300. Okay. Then we convert this in first. We convert into exponential form, which is 10 to the minus 3 newton. Then we convert this into exponential form, which is 10 to the 9 newton. And then. Then what do we have? We have 300 and we have 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the 9 is 10 to the 6. And we got Newton times Newton, which is Newton squared. Okay, now what you notice about this question, which I want, want you guys to pick up, is it says ex evaluate each of the following and express with SI units, number 1, having an appropriate prefix. SI units having an appropriate prefix. So we have solved this question, but we have not um, left it in the appropriate prefix. We have left it here in exponential form. We need to convert this into in the appropriate prefix. But this example, guys, is a very good example of what can go wrong. Perhaps many of us would say, well, 10 to the 6 is mega. And we have a Newton squared, so we might we might say that the answer here is 300 mega Newton squared. Okay, perhaps that's what our answer we, we would think that our answer would be, but this is completely wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Let's just have a look at what is mega Newton squared. Mega Newton squared is 10 to the six. Newton squared, which actually is 10 to the 12 Newton squared. Is that value the same as that value there? We've got 10 to the 6 Newton squared, and here we end up with 10 to the 12 Newton squared. So please, guys, whenever you see a square, a, a power, beware of, of just converting this into its, its uh, prefix. So 10 to the 6 Newton squared is not, by any means, mega Newton squared. Because mega Newton squared actually is 10 to the 12 Newton squared. Okay? So, so this is wrong. Now we need to, if we continue here, 300, 10 to the 6 Newton squared. We, need, we now need to see how do we convert this into the appropriate prefix. You can look in the textbook is one way. Um, the way I like to do it is we say 10 to the power of some value, Newton, all squared, right? That's 10 to the power of some value times Newton, all squared, should give us the same as that, 10 to the 6 Newton squared. So what 10 to the power of what times 2 would give us 6 well, the answer is 3. So here we have 300, um, 300 kilo newton squared. Okay? So please take note of the way that we solve these problems and please try to practice them. Okay. Thanks a lot.